Hello everybody and welcome back to Promise Gaming and More Democracy 3 Australia, playing on maximum difficulty. Um, so, you guys may recall, in uh, a couple of past videos, I'm like, eh, we passed the last election, I think it's gonna be a downhill walk from here, pretty easy, nothing to worry about. I actually think that I might be on the brink of disaster, believe it or not. And here's why I think this. So I'm actually playing a second campaign uh, in my spare time on maximum difficulty uh, in Democracy 3. Just because, you know, I just I kind of want to brush upon some skills, maybe have an, a, a, an area where I can test stuff out and learn to make some mistakes and uh, not, you know, repeat those in this video. And about this time in my other campaign, about by year 7, about with some of these events kind of lining up the way they are now, some bad stuff started to happen. Some really, really bad stuff. And then I loaded up this video, and I'm like, huh, what are the odds? Let's take a look at this water shortage. Uh-oh. You see this food price thing right here? Yeah, that's been steadily going up ever since the water shortage began, and, um, that's not good, because... What's going to end up happening is the poor earnings here, the poor, are just going to become absolutely impoverished and starving. And there's going to be a food price crisis, which almost inevitably will lead to a general strike, which will reduce our GDP by about 50% until it is gone. So yeah, that's a bit of a problem. And it's only going to get worse. Unfortunately, this is just the nature of the water shortage. The food price is only going to get worse all the way until maximum. So... I don't think at this point there's anything I can do to stop it. I think it's going to happen no matter what. What, of course, I could have done uh, a long time ago was pass some of the uh, climate prediction stuff, wherever you are. There you are. Climate Change Adaption Fund. Could have done a lower level of that. You know, maybe the minimum level. Just kind of reduce the likelihood that this ever crosses that start trigger and begins. But honestly, with the environment as bad as it has been... Yeah, I don't know. I, I think this is a, I think this is an inevitable crisis that you're gonna have to deal with whenever you play with the Clones and Drones expansion, especially on maximum difficulty. And I'll show you a couple ways we can try to deal with that. But there are two more crises that I was finding was a consistent problem. One, cyber warfare. So we have really good technology because, hey look, technological advantage. We know that I have pretty good technology. Uh, we have a pretty good GDP, at least right now. But you know what we don't have? Foreign relations. In fact, we have god-awful foreign relations. In fact, it's so freaking bad, holy crap, how did I let this happen, right? Australia is not very well respected in the world. Uh, this means that cyber warfare is right around the corner. It could even be as early as next turn, honestly, with it this bad. It could be any second now. So what we're probably going to want to do, actually, is um, go to foreign aid. Actually, let's just go ahead and go to the next turn. Did it fire? No, actually we did get high productivity, which is awesome. That's a little boost to the GDP and gives us more money. We did have an oil tanker sink, though, but it's a good thing we don't depend on a lot of oil, so could be worse. All right, surplus of $15. So one thing we could try to do to get around this is actually max out some foreign aid. We are wealthy now, right? Let's go ahead and pass this. Foreign relations will increase by about 48% over the next four turns, which is really, really, really good. So that alone... If, if, if the cyber warfare fires, and it may not, if I'm lucky, but it, it probably will, but if it does not, that foreign aid alone will probably be enough to get rid of it eventually. Maybe not immediately, but eventually. The alternatives, of course, would be to increase our military spending right now to try and preempt it. Um, we already have maximum intelligence services. We could do internet, internet censorship and try to prevent that as well. All kind of terrible options, not things that I really would like to do, so I'm not gonna. Ultimately, I think it's better to try and be preemptive. This is sort of the big problem, honestly, when playing Democracy 3, is you don't really get a lot of warning when some negative events are about to fire. You kind of just have to have, to have some experience in the game and kind of just know from a general sense, oh, guess what? I have 69% of my population farming and uh, a terrible environment. That means the water shortage is probably on the horizon. I can take some steps to prevent it, you know, before it becomes a problem, or suffer the consequences later. It's always better to be proactive, but you don't know how to be pre proactive unless you have a ton of experience in the game. And this is what actually is going to lead me to the third negative event that I'm pretty sure is on the horizon. Because again, every time I got to the point where I was having enough technology to get the technological advantage, you know what always followed? Always? A rare earth, uh, sorry, rare, yeah, rare earth metal crisis or shortage, right? So gold, silver, stuff that you could use to make electronics 
that stuff becomes completely depleted because we have really good electronics, really high demand for it, we're screwed. Here's the problem with that event. If we get that, you lose the technological advantage. You can have maximum technology, but if you have the rare earth metal crisis, you're not going to get any of the benefits of technological advantage. It just goes away entirely, which kind of sucks. So, there are a couple ways we could try to combat that. One, in order, I'm, I'm going to be preempting this because I'm very sure it's on the horizon. So I'm going to be pre preemptive about it. And I know of two policies in particular that do affect it directly. One would be something I actually can't afford right now because I, because I got the Ford aid. That would be the rare earth metal mining um, program. And even on a pretty low level, it does a fair bit to actually reduce it. Uh, it can be pretty expensive, though. But this, this honestly, this policy is fantastic. A minimum, it only costs $1 billion, but it is a huge boost to productivity, just regardless. It's amazing. And if you're willing to spend a ton of money, it ruins the environment a little bit, but you can get a lot of rare earth metals. So that's pretty good. That's one way to deal with this. The other is the Green Electronics Initiative. Now, I'm going to go ahead and pass this because this is my chosen method of preventing the Rare Earth Crisis. Um, you can't see it right here, but there's going to be a hidden little tracker right here to directly impact the Rare Earth Crisis. So if you do find that you're having that problem in your game, this is one of the ways you can do it. It actually is pretty good across the board. It only upsets capitalists, but it reduces the pollution event, increases your energy efficiency, reduces CO2 emissions, and makes the environmentalists happy for a very, very modest price. This is a very good option. I'd highly recommend taking it uh, as soon as you get the technological advantage just to ensure that the rare earth crisis does not fire. And that's all the political capital we have. So let's move on. How is the... Oh, lordy lord, those food price... Yeah, we're about to have a food price crisis. Once you get to this point, uh, I think the start trigger is like right here. Yeah, we're guaranteed to have a food crisis, which means we're going to get a strike. Oh, that's going to suck so bad. We are going to lose so much freaking money. It's not even funny. Yeah, this is going to hurt. This is going to hurt really bad. Oh, there's a the cyber warfare too. Oh, no. Okay, first things first. Human cloning. Nearly 20% of children are already conceived with the help of in vitro fertilization. Cloning them instead is scientifically possible. Despite entering legal limbo, a number of wealthy couples and individuals have gone ahead and made cloning reality. Religious leaders are strongly opposing this new trend, labeling it a satanic practice. Well, that means we have to ban it, because you know how much I love them uh, religious people in this game, but... Cloning is not a natural method of procreation. It's not organic. This practice goes against all religious teachings, and a moral society should not allow this to take place. Honestly, this alone, I mean, I, mean, I, I don't know, maybe there's some truth to that, but I mean, I mean, mostly, I'm concerned about some of the ethical uh, questions about cloning and stuff like that. We had a conversation about this before in one of my other series. Um, there are quite a few as far as, like, personhood, uh, what is the relationship to your clone? You're technically sort of a parent, but... Technically, he's more of a brother in a way. It's, it's bizarre how your relationships kind of work. What's the cultural implications? There's a lot of that. But also, uh, what if cloning is allowed and people, maybe illegally, start growing uh, separate versions of themselves so that they can harvest organs? You know, let's suppose that I need a new kidney. Well, what if I just start cloning a, cl a clone of myself and despite his own human rights, I harvest him for his organs? I don't know. There's questions to it. It's a big, it's a big question mark because it's not a reality. But there you go. Fascism is capitalism in decay. Hmm. I'm not inclined to believe anything that Lenin says, but there may be a little bit of truth to that. Not, 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 not a personal fan of the Lenin man. Despite the fact that I'm doing a socialist playthrough right now. Alright. Yeah. Food crisis, really freaking bad. Oh, look at those food. Oh, ugh, oh gosh. Food is so expensive, the poor can't eat. Right, so we now have no choice. We absolutely have to do something about the water shortage. This is going to cost me... Well, first off, once a general strike fires, my surplus is gone. Alright, this, this, this thing is freaking over. We're going to have to go several hundred billion dollars in debt trying to fix this issue and stabilize the country. Cyber warfare, I'm actually kind of hoping that as foreign relations tick up, because we aren't really seeing the effect yet, I do think that this will go away on its own. I think we've already taken the steps necessary. It would have been better to prevent it, but we didn't do that, so oh well. Let's go to the Climate Change Adaption Fund. We don't have a choice. It's going to cost us $48 billion per quarter. Holy hell, that is a lot. <sighs> All right, but this will reduce the water shortage by 22%. That's good. What we're going to do is we're going to use this as long as we need to to prevent the water, to get rid of the water shortage, and then once that's gone, immediately we are going to reduce this down to the minimum. We could cancel it, 
But I'm worried that if we do that, it might come back. So we'll see. We'll play that one by ear later. I'm not too sure what to expect about it. We'll find out. But we don't have a choice. We have no choice but to do that. Now, here's the other thing about the water shortage. Let's go in depth about how this particular thing works. So the water shortage is happening because, one, as time goes on and global warming, blah, 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 um, water becomes, you know, less available and it's harder to grow food, which means that food becomes more expensive, blah, blah, blah. That's how this all works, basically. One, improving the environment will do a lot in order to improve uh, the water shortage, right? Because we're not polluting and ruining water sources or obstructing water flow and stuff like that. But here's one of the big drivers of this. Farmer's percentage. This is one of the things that I think a lot of people overlook, and it's actually one of the things that they added to bring some balance into clones and drones. I personally hate it, but because it's so freaking hard to deal with, you always have a water shortage. But that's because it is so very easy to pass a ton of policies that make uh, farmers happy and increase their membership. But it does make some level of sense. If a lot of people are farming in your country using up water, the more people using up water, well, then of course there's going to be a shortage. The demand has gone up, right? Makes sense. Well, guess what we've been doing? We've been gr gra drastically improving their membership. Biofuel subsidies. Yep, subsidizing people to go farm. Organic farming. Yep, paying money for people to go farm. Rural development, and so on and so forth. Okay, great. So what do we do about it now that it's here? Well, reducing farmer membership could be a good thing. But we also need to reduce food prices. And if you reduce the number of farmers, you could be increasing the amount of uh, the cost of food as well. So how do we deal with it? There are three policies that I'm aware of that can be used to fix this. And uh, ultimately, only one is going to work for us. First things first, there is the agricultural subsidy. Basically, we pay people to go out there and farm like crazy, produce as much food as possible, and reduce the food prices. And that's exactly what this will do. Agricultural subsidies will reduce the food price. Okay, that's pretty good. The second one is very similar, the ver uh, vertical farm subsidies. So instead of using up land, people actually start building farms on the top of like skyscrapers and stuff, and you start making better, more efficient use of futuristic buildings and such, right? Okay, cool. Does the exact same sort of thing. It uh, increases the number of people farming and reduces food price. Here's the problem. What's driving our wa uh, water shortage? The number of farmers. So if we increase the number of farmers, we increase the water shortage, which means that food prices go up even though we're trying to reduce them. It's not a great solution. Unfortunately, I'd like it to be, but it's not. So that leaves one other particular solution here. And that is the Farmland Acquisition Program, which actually fits very well for this particular playthrough, but here's how this is going to work. We are going to um, use our government influence, basically, to buy up, kind of mandate, the uh, purchase of um, lots of farmlands, which the government shall work and produce food, and we shall sell it at a lower rate, basically. The Ministry for Foreign Affairs brokers deals with developing nations... Okay, actually, I've, I've said this wrong. Farmland acquisition, I, I really thought this had a lot more to do with us directly seizing land. I've apparently misunderstood this. Huh. Our expenses support nations suck in poverty while the crops we grow in those countries' fertile soil reduce the price significantly. So really what we're doing is we're, we're, we're paying for other nations to become our farm. I mean, that's actually a little bit different. I misunderstood how this program works. Either way, by the way, typo, liberals. It's like the... Yeah, hmm. environmentalists and liberals like it. it's new colonialism, because it basically is. In a lot of ways, we're actually going to be kind of paying for a colony in another nation to provide us uh, resources, which is what colonies did back in the day. Some similarity, obviously we can't force them to do it, so it's still a voluntary transaction, but even so. Yeah, so um, we're going to be paying a lot of money then to foreign nations and encourage them to farm and sell us cheap food. So what this is going to do is it actually reduces farmer membership. As a result, it makes the farmers unhappy. But it reduces their membership, which is good for combating the water shortage, and it reduces food prices a little bit. Not nearly as much as the agricultural subsidies, not nearly as much as the vertical farm subsidies, but a little bit. And helping to reduce the water shortage will ensure that the food prices will go down. The sooner we can get rid of that, the better. It does make patriots a little bit happier, maybe because, I don't know, patriots like... Colonies, I don't, this one seems a little bit weird to me, liberals don't like it, blah blah blah. It's going to cost us a fair bit of money, and we're already spending a ton of money on the climate prediction stuff, which you already saw. So we're going to go heavily in debt starting next turn. Very heavily in debt. But if we don't deal with this, we're done. The game is basically over. So here we go. Liberal plot, of course. There's the general strike. Look at that. Look at the GDP go. Gone. Kaput. Boom. And of course, unemployment will start going up as well. Child labor, let's go ahead and criminalize that. We're socialist after all. So the general strike 
basically means that uh, pretty much everybody, most of the workers in our nation, are just going to straight up stop working. Which means the GDP goes down by 44% right now. And of course, nobody likes this. Um, the GDP, you can see here, has just gone, ooh, and it's only going to go worse. And unemployment, wherever that is, uh, unemployment, where are you? Unemployment, ah, that's tourism. Unemployment is going to spike up all the way toward max, which means homelessness will begin. We're going to lose all of our money. We're going to have a debt crisis. All sorts of terrible things happen from a general strike. We have to deal with this. But because we've been paying attention, we know what the driving issue is for this. Poor earnings. Poor earnings are bad because food prices are now near maximum. Food prices are near maximum because of a water shortage. Deal with the water shortage, which you can already see is starting to go down. And we will eventually, it may take about a year, but eventually we will deal with the general strike. In the meantime, we're going to go very, very heavily in debt. But I'm not sure that there's much we can do about it. Now, there are a few things we can do to try and speed this along. For example, if I were to actually minimize our biofuel subsidies, now that we don't need this anymore, right? What if we do this? This was driving up the food price because we're using food for fuel. Nope, let's reduce that. Down to practically nothing. Saves us some money, also changes the food price back a little bit. Um... What if we pass the Trade Council to try and increase na uh, international trade so that people are better able to ship, you know, cheap food to our nation? Stuff like that. We're trying to help with that. Uh, there's a few other things that we need to really pay attention to. This deficit is going to be a serious issue. If I can't raise taxes or if I can't reduce expenditures, we're in trouble. You know, one thing I could do. I'm a little bit worried that this alcohol abuse, it's, it's not going to go down much further. The alcohol awareness campaign is almost done. What if... We raised up the alcohol tax a lot to like 60%. Yeah, this will not only make us some money, but it gets rid of the alcohol abuse. Why is that important? Because the alcohol abuse is costing me $7 billion. If we can fix alcohol abuse, that's almost like cutting an entire program. And we're making more money because of the alcohol tax. So that's going to be good for us. Um... The other thing that we can do to try and fix the water shortage is try to improve the environment. The environment, by the way, here's the cool thing about this, right? So the environment was really bad, which caused a water shortage, but because everyone's going to stop working, our GDP is going to plummet, and our GDP plummets, which means the environment is going to skyrocket up toward max. Which means that the water shortage will go away, which means that the GDP will come back, which means it'll go back down. It just kind of keeps hitting this like weird oscillating stage. We're going to take advantage of this. We're going to use the better environment. Because the, the GDP is going to go down and there's nothing I can do about it, we're going to see pollution is actually going to go away as of next turn. Asthma epidemic will go away. If we are willing to spend ourselves into a hole even further, we can actually make sure that the water shortage never comes back and the environment actually stays good. So we're going to go ahead and do some of that. For example, let's go ahead and pass the hybrid cars initiative. This will actually improve the environment a fair bit. Doesn't cost me a lot of money. It's not too bad. It's not too bad. It's one of the cheapest ways that I can improve the environment. No big deal. How many turns you got left? We got one more. All right. Let's see what the damage is. Or liberal plots. Thank you. Pollution is at an end. Mortgage rate rises. Oh, no. So now the poor have no income and the middle people have no income. The credit rating has been downgraded to a B, which, of course, means we are spending more money on our interest, which means our debt is getting worse. <laughs> and unemployment is going up, 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 up. This is terrible. But I do think if we play our cards right, we can fix this within a year. But it's pretty bad, I'm not going to lie. This is pretty bleak. Asthma epidemic is going to go away. Okay, that's good. General strike is only getting worse, but... Aha! Okay, the water shortage as of next turn will be gone. So, we're not going to get this until this until next video, but once we do, what I'm going to do immediately... Uh, actually... Maybe I want to do this now. So I have two things, I was, there, I, here's what I was thinking about doing, to try, oh my god, that deficit's a hundred billion dollars. What I have been thinking about doing is, wait, I haven't, have I played too many turns? How many turns have I done? Wait a minute, how many, how many turns have I done? Give me a minute, I need to figure this out. Am I, am I over my time? No, no, we're fine, this is my last turn. Okay, so... Here's what I was thinking about doing. We could raise the taxes again, income tax, and try to make some money. Alternatively, now that we've actually crossed this point, I actually could reduce this. So let's think this through for a second. What's going to make me the most money? If I do this, currently at 43, reduce it down, we're saving about $31 billion. 
dollars if I do this now. Alternatively, if I do taxes, which I can raise up to about 60% before I hit the brain drain effect, is about $35 billion. Hmm. I could do this, and this would work. This is technically more. Of course, raising up taxes is always a bad thing, but we're going to have to. We have to raise taxes, and we have to reduce the climate prediction in order to get ourselves out of this deficit. I don't have a choice. We're going to raise the tax because it makes me the most money. Next video, next turn, we are going to reduce to minimum the Climate Change Adaption Fund because we'll have successfully gotten rid of the water shortage. Reducing it down saves me another 30 summit million. Or sorry, billion. Of course, we we'll still have to figure out ways of saving some money because this expenditure is really bad. For, again, kind of obvious reasons. So if we're not able to get rid of this general strike, we're just done. We're stuck in the water. So many bad things here. Hmm. Food crisis is starting to go down. Okay. So here's the domino effect here. Water shortage goes away. Water shortage goes away. Food crisis goes away. Food crisis goes away. General strike goes away. The general strike is so high, it probably will take about two or three turns to all the way, go all the way down. So we probably have another year or so to look forward to of this. The good news is that cyber warfare is about to go away, which actually improves the GDP, which improves our tax income. So that helps. That does help a little bit. Alcohol abuse? Why? What? It's, it's, that's a big jump. That's a big jump for someone who just raised taxes. That doesn't make any sense. Whatever, it'll be fine. Unemployment, how are you looking? Oh, God. Asthma epidemic's about to go away, which will be a little bit helpful. Okay. Yeah, next video is going to be a rough one. We are going to work ourselves into quite a hole of debt, but I do think we can get rid of it. We're just going to have to be very frugal. Very careful about how we proceed. Next video is going to be a doozy. Thank you all very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Be sure to hit that like button, leave a comment with your suggestions, and subscribe if you have not already. And I, as always, will see you guys next time.